Chapter 4 The Gospel The Cross and the Resurrection Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins and was raised from the dead, has become our Lord. This is the Gospel, the greatest news in the world. Because we did not want God in our hearts, we became children of wrath, children of the devil, and enemies of God. For our sins, God sent His only Son, Jesus, to this earth. The Gospel is that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead to bear all of our sins and become our Lord. This is the Gospel, the greatest news in the world. 1 Corinthians 15, 3-4 For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. Amen, amen, amen. By Jesus dying on the cross and presenting an eternal sacrifice, God forgave all of our sins. Mark 10, 45 For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Amen, amen, amen. Ephesians 1, 7 In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Amen, amen, amen. Hebrews 9.12 He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place, once for all, by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. Amen, amen, amen. Hebrews 10.12 But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Amen, amen, amen. Hebrews 10.14 because by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Amen, amen, amen. By dying on the cross and rising from the dead, Jesus became our Lord. Romans fourteen seven to 9 For none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Amen, amen, amen. The resurrection of Jesus is the proof that God has forgiven all of our sins. 1 Corinthians fifteen seventeen, And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Amen, amen, amen. Romans four twenty five. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus gave an eternal sacrifice on the cross once for all, thereby bearing the sins of all people. By raising Jesus from the dead, God proclaimed that he had received Jesus' eternal sacrifice and now counted us as righteous. Romans 4.25 Therefore, if Jesus had not risen from the dead, we would still be in our sins. 1 Corinthians 15.17 Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose from the dead to become our Lord. This is the greatest news in the world, the Gospel. The power of this Gospel applies to those who repent of their sin and believe in Jesus as their Lord. The Gospel is Jesus Christ, who died and rose again according to the Scriptures. Pastor Sung Ro Kim, Hanmaum Church, Chuncheon, South Korea the Apostle Paul proclaimed that the gospel he was preaching was Jesus Christ, who died according to the Scriptures, and who rose again according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3-4 It was a gospel that was passed on, 1 Corinthians 15, 1, to him from the other apostles. The core of the gospel is the cross and the resurrection. In 1 Corinthians 15, 3-4 is the original form of the gospel which gave birth to the early church. These verses contain the core message of the gospel that was handed down by word of mouth according to Jewish custom, without even a single missing word. However, even during the times of the early church, there were already forces who would deny the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Galatians 3.1 states, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. 
to those who were claiming that salvation was not only found in the cross of Christ, but also in works of the law, the Apostle Paul proclaimed, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Galatians 2.21 Denying the cross and not believing it ultimately means denying the gospel and denying Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15.12 it says, But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? The witnesses who had seen the risen Jesus Christ firsthand were, for the most part, still alive during the times of the early church. But even in those times, there were people who were denying Christ's resurrection, the core of the gospel. In this way, denying the resurrection and not believing it ultimately means denying the gospel and denying Christ. The gospel is the cross. This is because it was upon the cross that an eternal sacrifice was given, once for all, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And through this sacrifice, he took responsibility for the sins of all people. There is no salvation without the cross. At the same time, the gospel is also the resurrection. Through the resurrection, God was proclaiming to all the world that he had received the eternal sacrifice that Jesus Christ had given upon the cross with his own blood, and that we were now righteous. Romans 4.25 In this way, it is impossible to separate the cross and the resurrection, which make up the core of the gospel. The death on the cross had to occur for the resurrection to happen. The resurrection needed the cross to happen. They are like the two sides of a coin. Therefore, the cross and the resurrection cannot possibly be compared to each other to determine which is greater or more important, and neither can be excluded as both are core gospel events. The cross and the resurrection are both the core events of the gospel. So why is it that, when the apostles went out to preach, they proclaimed the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Acts 1, 22, 4, 33. The early church preached the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but this does not mean that they simply proclaimed the fact that Jesus had risen. They were proclaiming that Jesus, who died on the cross, rose again, and therefore is our Lord and Christ. Acts 2.36 In other words, through the resurrection, they had proclaimed the true meaning of the cross. The resurrection confirmed the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and also confirmed that the cross of Jesus Christ was the eternal sacrifice which atoned for our sins for all eternity. The resurrection illuminates the gospel of the cross. The Holy Spirit illuminates the true meaning of the cross through the resurrection, and that is how the early church was able to proclaim the resurrection by the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 4.33 The gospel is the cross and the resurrection. Therefore, believing in the gospel means not only believing that Jesus forgave all of our sins on his cross, but also believing that Jesus rose from the dead. In Romans 10.9-10, the Apostle Paul proclaimed exactly what a person should believe when he or she believes in the gospel. Paul said that a person will be saved when he or she believes that God raised Jesus from the dead and that Jesus is the Lord who forgave all of our sins upon the cross and rose again to reign as the King of Kings. This is the faith that God counts as righteousness. Romans 4, 9 When balanced between the cross and the resurrection, both of which are the core of the gospel, is achieved in our Christian faith, our faith is able to grow and mature properly. If only one of these two halves is emphasized while the other is denied, there will be an incomplete gospel, a powerless one that is no gospel at all. The gospel that was passed down from the apostles is Jesus, who died according to the scriptures and rose again according to the scriptures. Even today, he is the living King of Kings, and I hope that this truth will be proclaimed throughout all the nations.